Okay, so uh, my colleague uh, distributed some uh, journal articles and uh, at the beginning I would like you to first uh, read them a little bit, not in detail, but just look them over. Uh, they are uh, both from the same publisher, different field. Uh, and uh, with this we'll uh, be going to, uh, I'll be starting my presentation on uh, how to choose where to publish. Okay, so now you had a little bit of time to look through these two articles and uh, as you can see um, they are uh, on very different topics uh, they are from this publisher that promises uh, the articles in uh, their journals are peer-reviewed but uh, based on what you just saw, do you think that is true? 
No, <laughs> I don't think either. Uh, this first article, uh, I, I'm not sure uh, exactly what it's about. I'm not a mathematician, so I, I can't say if it's a good article or, or if it's not. But based on this article, I think the first one is not good either. Why? Uh, here uh, you can see uh, it starts with the authors. Uh, the authors are Thomas Paris, uh, Harry Kim, Belana Torres, Kesa Kampa, uh, Captain Janeway, and the ship's doctor. Uh, this is uh, a scientific way uh, written uh, uh, one episode of Star Trek Voyager, uh, season one, episode 15, if anyone's that interested. Uh, it talks about uh, how it's not good for people to travel through space uh, uh, in warp 10 speed because then people evolve into some sort of lizards and this article was accepted in four scientific journals including this one um, and uh, this is just an example for you to see what kind of rubbish can get published uh, in uh, so-called peer-reviewed journals because you know an anything goes on the internet you can say anything write anything uh, but uh, researchers sometimes try to expose low or uh, low or no standard journals with uh, examples like this uh, this was uh, uh, written by a biologist uh, going by the name Biotracky. We don't know his real name. And he was inspired by a similar fake article on Star Wars, where there are many, many more examples, like uh, one uh, scientist um, wrote uh, an article about uh, an episode on Seinfeld, and the, uh, the other researcher uh, just a few years ago wrote about his experiment that uh, on topic of uh, political persuasion of people so if you're more politically left then you wipe your behind with left hand and vice versa <laughs> uh, and in this kind of uh, topics you can easily see that something is not right when you when you see this but if uh, you see an article that is uh, about some serious topic you won't, uh, you won't see mistakes so easily, like this one. Because here, first the authors, then there's the affiliation, Starfield Academy, and then there is also, we thank the United Federation of Planets for financial support. Uh, lots of uh, things like that uh, can uh, be easily seen. But if you have some equations or some experiments that were done in the interest of science, even though the scientist maybe did something wrong, maybe um, made some error, maybe he or she didn't see anything wrong, but a reviewer might catch something, but because it didn't go through peer review, it was published like, th like that. Uh, the public won't know or won't see the mistakes so easily. That's why it's very important for researchers uh, that they publish in quality journals, in real scientific journals, and also, uh, although this is not the topic today, it's also import very important that you don't cite and reference journals who are predatory, who uh, uh, work uh, who has who have questionable works published because then the cycle just continues so uh, are all open access journals publishers deceptive and predatory of course not right 
dubious publishing practices are due to the characteristics of uh, electronic publishing in general. But today I'll, you will find about uh, if you will find out about red flags and the tools that help you to recognize good journals and uh, so that you don't publish with the questionable ones. Open access does not mean predatory uh, because open access publication must follow the same peer review editing processes just as any other academic subscription journal. We could say that uh, predatory publishers um, use deceptive uh, practices uh, because um, because uh, they use this open access uh, auto pace model for their own profit uh, as, uh, as you could see with little or no peer review. Peer review is a very important uh, quality process, uh, as well as useful feedback for the authors. The peer review process can alert authors uh, to any errors in the article uh, or gaps in the literature that they missed. Uh, without peer review process, you, as you could see, anyone could, can publish anything and present it to the world as a science which can lead to also very dangerous situations because it's not just so that you, you uh, researcher has work published and he or she got some points at the university, he or she can teach others, but uh, this kind of uh, practice can be also used by some companies, for example, that uh, develop some uh, food supplement and make s write some studies uh, that are disguised as, as science and sell this as cure for cancer, for example. Right? If uh, some people uh, wrote a few articles, like studies, and um, publish them in journals like this, who publish anything for money, uh, then they could maybe uh, buy an ad in a national newspaper uh, saying this is a cure for cancer, uh, studies this, 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 in this paper support this, and maybe someone would think, wow, this is real, this is scientifically proven, I'm going to try this. I won't, uh, I, won't be, I won't be doing any chemotherapy, I won't be doing treatments that my doctor uh, told me to do, I will just buy this, because science says this is the cure, right? So uh, it's not just simple uh, points for uh, the university, but this also uh, fake science can then uh, turn, uh, can go to or general public as well and has impact there also. So uh, another uh, practice uh, is uh, that uh, predatory publishers are using is uh, hijacking another journal. It means stealing another journal's identity with all the information, ESSN number, uh, editorial board, uh, open access policy, editorial policy, archive, anything. And lo lots of times the hijacked uh, version is also uh, higher ranking if you Google it. And a lot of the time they use the same colors. And this is one example. If you look at, look at this picture and this, the colors are basically the same, not much difference. So even if, you, for example, you uh, ask your advisor, where I have this article on this topic and I need to publish it somewhere, please help me, which journal should I choose? And then your advisor says, 
I think this article would be good for this journal. Try this. And you Google it and you come to this site, which is hijacked. And then you will publish in a hijacked journal in, uh, with no peer review. And you maybe won't even notice it for a while. This is the, the real version of the journal. Or maybe this one, Wolfenium, this very uh, uh, well-known case of hijacked journals. Uh, hijackers usually target journals that don't have official home pages or that are very difficult to find. Uh, very good candidates for identity theft are also journals that don't have electronic version at all or are run by small publishers. And as I said, a lot of the time, if you Google the name of uh, such a journal that is hijacked, the hijacked version, the not real version will be higher ranking than the real version. Sometimes the real uh, journal is very difficult to find. And some are so lucky that they have uh, three or four uh, stolen versions. How should I say? And this is Ufenia. This one is real and this one is not. Uh, the next uh, thing I would like to say is that uh, even if you come across on journal and you look at the editorial board and you might see, oh, this one is an expert on my field, I, I saw this name before, it doesn't mean really anything anymore because that expert could be written in an editorial board of some journal without his knowledge and even if he or she does know that he uh, the, uh, their name uh, appears on such a website they a lot of the time they can't do much about it and uh, as with that Star Trek, Star Trek article also some scientists tried uh, uh, wanted to see uh, what they can get away with and someone applied and was accepted to the honorable editors of this magazine. Uh, Yosemite Sam, the name probably, maybe you don't know, but even the, uh, in the bi biography you could see it's something is wrong if someone says that he's adapted playing the violin and sailing small boats in a biomedical science and research journal. Uh, Yosemite Sam is uh, actually a cartoon character with the intense hatred of rabbits, Bugs Bunny in particular. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> um, so uh, this is another thing that we, we can't really be sure about in journals, uh, editorial boards. And um, next thing that we can't trust are also uh, metrics. There's a lot of misleading and questionable metrics. Uh, some publishers mislead with influencing factors that have very similar names to recognized metrics. Um, either they lie about that, uh, they say they have impact factor when they don't, or they just use some other metric with, that is not uh, that is questionable. Uh, sometimes uh, when, I, uh, when professors uh, uh, and teachers ask me to check the journal for them before they publish, I sometimes notice that the, uh, after a lot of clicking and research that the uh, company that owns the journal is the same company that owns the uh, a website that sells this questionable metric. So they're the same people. Uh, also, another thing that you should be careful is fake conferences. So if there are fake journals, of course, there are fake conferences as well, where content, again, is irrelevant. Uh, there was an example when the, uh, a group of scientists uh, 
well, uh, wanted to present uh, their work on the topic of flying pigs and work accepted. Uh, for $1,000 they could uh, present this. Uh, and then I thought maybe someone was uh, did their job poorly and didn't catch this nonsense. Let's try again. And they uh, wrote a proposal about how birds are nesting at the bottom of the sea and they were accepted again. So again, no peer review. Uh, conferences are very poorly organized. These kind of conferences also usually just uh, uh, are on the same day with a different topic. So if you go there, you will present uh, with one would be, I don't know, uh, an expert on Korean history. The other will be expert on robotics. Uh, the third will be, uh, presentation will be about Slovenian literature. So very different topics that have nothing in common. And the same organizer offers uh, usually uh, lots of these conferences all the time. So to sum up a bit of these deceptive publishing practices, um, unrealistic timeline of, uh, for publication. These uh, journals usually publish very quickly, even in a week or two uh, from acceptance. Uh, there's lack of transparency regarding the publishing fees. Sometimes you, uh, the, uh, your work can get accepted and then only after that you find out that you have to pay something, some fees. Uh, they, pub uh, they publish anything they receive, even uh, get me off that fucking list uh, also happened. <laughs> uh, Identity theft of legitimate journals, use of fake matrix or claims of, uh, of false claims of legitimate metrics, uh, false claims of the membership of the editorial board, lack of transparency, or uh, false claims regarding peer review processes, and uh, of course, uh, you probably uh, know this one too, invitation emails to submit that often contain grammatical errors and uh, they're also very flattering usually. Uh, sometimes they write to you in a way that you, you feel like you're a Nobel Prize winner or something. Um, and sometimes the name of the journal does not match the content of the journal and the name of the journal is uh, sometimes not consistent with the geographical origin like Canadian Scientific Journal from Switzerland. Uh, and contact email address is usually non-journal or publisher affiliated. And of course, unprofessional looking websites that often contain dead links. Uh, this uh, questionable publishers are getting better and better all the time, so sometimes when you look at the uh, their website, it can look very professional. But when you click a few a few links, you can see that it's just a front, just a mask. Uh, Megan O'Donnell uh, from the Iowa State University uh, has uh, made. Uh, four groups of, uh, for different types of predatory publishers, and I thought I'm to share this with you, it's very simple. One is Fisher that lures you in with the promises and then charges you fees. The other is Imposter Hijacker, who steals your identity. Yeah. And the third one is Truan Horse, legitimate looking website that is just an empty shell and Unicorn, Too Good To Be True. And these publishers may in fact be legitimate, but maybe they just don't know what they're doing. Uh, they don't know they're not providing good service. So before you publish anything in journal, ask yourself a few questions like, is the scope uh, 
clearly stated. Have you read that? Uh, have you read any good articles from this journal? Do your colleagues, uh, your advisors, know this uh, journal? Is uh, journal indexed in the databases they claim on their website? Are the reviewers recognized as experts? Uh, and is the publisher a member of, the, of an important professional association? And of course, you can also use a lot of tools that are freely available, and some are not so freely, some are paying, but uh, there are a lot of them, and you, of course, you can't use all of them all the time, but I thought to just show you a few and maybe some of these can help you in the future. First one I would like to uh, present is uh, this tool thing, Check Submit. Uh, it's a checklist to help you choose trusted journals and uh, Think Check Attend, which is for conferences, for evaluating the legitimacy in order to help you decide whether to present there or not. And as Moitza mentioned, uh, Directory of Open Access Journals is a very important uh, source or tool. Uh, here are high quality peer reviewed open access journals and is free of charge. All the data is freely accessible. This one is Cabell's uh, Scholarly Analytics is uh, a paying tool. They have two lists, journalytics and predatory reports. It's sort of like blacklist and whitelist of journals. On uh, their blog, you can also see their uh, uh, the reasons why some uh, why they look for uh, how they uh, list a journal or a publisher on the blacklist or on the whitelist. One of the things uh, that is useful is also Ulrich's web. It's a uh, source of bibliographic and published information on academic scholarly journals, including peer review titles. And Sherpa Romeo. I'm sure you've heard of this one. Uh, online resource that aggregates, presents, publisher, journal open access policies from around the world. Uh, it's a searchable database of policies. You can see if it's embargo, non embargo, the license, location, journal website, everything. Uh, Journal citation reports is also uh, something you can use. And uh, uh, this resource is to locate citation data for a particular journal title. And uh, also, it can help you to have this tool uh, integrated in uh, their website uh, that it's called Manuscript Matcher. Uh, which is also part of EndNote citation tool. I don't know if anyone uses EndNote. Uh, basically, if you have an article uh, that you would like to publish, you can choose this tool and it will give you a list of potential, publication, uh, potential uh, journals where you can publish. You just need to write down your title and abstract, and if you use EndNote, you can also select references that you used, and then uh, helps. Uh, then you get the uh, the list of potential journals uh, that are most relevant to your research. You this, with uh, tools like this, you can also avoid. Uh, hijacked journals because you here you have information about the journal, about the publisher, uh, there are links there, uh, and open access journals are marked with this open access sign. So you uh, you can see uh, if the journal is open access or not. 
very quickly. Another journal finder uh, is this uh, Elsevier's journal finder. Uh, basically, it's the same principle. You again write the title, you write the abstract, and then you can also choose uh, uh, only journals that offer gold open access or journals with subscription, and then you get the list. And again, list with the information about the journal and with the link to the journal website where you can submit your paper. So again, you avoid uh, hijacked journals. Next one is Springer Nature Journal Suggester. Uh, here can also uh, uh, write down not only your title and uh, abstract, but also uh, you can choose if you want to search only open access journals or not. And then when you get the list, you again have uh, more information about the journal. And if you click on the journal, you get uh, the link where you can submit your manuscript. You get information with this journal is indexed, publication charge, and aims and scope. So all helpful uh, when you uh, decide where to publish. Wiley also has this kind of journal finder. Uh, again, you put in information about your title, about your abstract, and you get a list of potential journals. Uh, it's a shame that this is only the potential. There's no guarantee that any of these will actually uh, publish your work. Uh, also, Taylor and Francis has similar journal suggester. Uh, and uh, IEEE also. Uh, IEEE uh, works like that, that you just enter key phrases or keywords and the title. And uh, IEEE also searches for uh, conferences, not only for journals. And you can also put in uh, the date uh, before which you would like to get your work published. Then you get the results also. Uh, if it's uh, open access, you can see quickly it's specially marked open access available or no open access. Uh, with a click on this, on the title of a uh, journal or the conference, you see uh, more information about the publisher, link uh, to their website, aim and scope, uh, in case of conferences, also location, contact information of the organizer, the team of the conference, notification, acceptance date, accepted paper submission deadline, and so on. A uh, very important uh, tool is also the Rejection Watch Hijacked Journal Checker. This is quite new, I would say. Uh, it's a few months old. Uh, Rejection Watch started this with another researcher. And anyone can contribute. You just, uh, if you find a journal that is hijacked, you, uh, you can submit uh, the title using the form uh, on this list. Uh, here you can see hijack titles and then uh, original journals. Uh, for me, the list would be better if also the uh, URL of the original journal would be listed, but it's not. It's only the fake URLs. So maybe they will improve in the future, but it's a very good uh, source for information about hijacked uh, journals. So uh, now when you go through all these things uh, and you decide uh, where to publish, it's also important that you publish where it's most convenient for you and least expensive for you, I would say. So 
because of uh, different agreements of publishers and universities. Uh, we have also, uh, Moitza uh, already mentioned, discounts and vouchers. You can always check about the condition so which publisher at your library website or contact your librarian to find out more about accessing discounts. Uh, uh, article protesting charge is payment basically for publishing an article. It, the costs of turning a manuscript into a finished article and promoting and I don't know what else. It can be zero, it can be 100 euros or it can be 10,000 euros. So uh, uh, check your uh, check at your library to see the conditions. Usually, when submitting, you need to use your university email address, but some other conditions may also apply. Uh, and be careful, because as you could see, uh, sometimes it's very difficult to choose a journal that is right for you and uh, that is real, that is not predatory. Because if uh, you use, uh, if you happen to publish in a predatory journal with a predatory publisher, the best you could hope for is that they don't publish anything really or that uh, that work that proof disappears quickly from the internet. 